Hello YouTube, fellow math students and math teachers, DeVore here again, and today we're going to talk about the task to function or not to function from the Mathematics Vision Project, Math 1, Module 5. For this one, we're actually mostly looking at relationships, and we just wanted to determine whether or not these relationships can be represented with functions. We don't need to graph anything, we don't really need to do anything with values, we just need to say yes or no, and say why. All right, our first one, we have a person's name versus their social security number. The first one says a person's number versus their social security number. When I see the word versus, this is the way that I interpret it. I'm going to look at domain range. In this case, I would say that my domain is the name and the range is the social security number. All right, so if we have a name, just a generic name, does it go with exactly one social security number? I'm going to say no, because two people with the same name will have two different social security numbers. There are probably multiple Jane Doe's or, you know, to use as an example. And they will all have distinct social security numbers. So this cannot represent a function. However, if we look at it the other way, where instead, here's, it's exactly flipped, a person's social security number versus their name. Well, that means that now the domain is the social security number, the range is the name. Does one social security number go with one name? And I believe that the answer in this case would be yes. Now, can multiple social security numbers go with the same name? Yes. Just because, uh, you, again, you can have multiple people with the same name, but they would all have distinct social security numbers. So yes, because each social security number is associated with exactly one name. You can't have the same social security number be for Jane and John Doe. It does not work that way. Each Jane Doe, though, will have their own social security number, and that's totally okay. Okay, the cost of gas versus the amount of gas pumped. Our domain, then, is the cost. Our range is the amount of gas. Can we... So let's see, if we put in the cost of gas, let's say it's $2 a gallon, and the range would be the amount of gas pumped. Not the amount of money spent, but the amount of gas pumped. And so I'm going to say that this one is no, because the cost, because we, we can have, let's see, we can have multiple amounts of gas pumped for each cost point for the gas. So say we have $2 gas, which is pretty close to what we have right now, then we're not going to have, we, we can have someone pumping 10, 10 gallons, 15 gallons, 1 gallon, all associated with that 2 gallon price point, and that's not, that's not what we're looking for. Okay. Here we've got a set of ordered pairs. We've got 3, 6, 4, 10, 8, 12, 4, 10. And we want to say whether or not this is a function. When you have a set of ordered pairs or a table or something like that, you are looking for multiple instances of the same input. In this case, we've got a 4 and a 4. And you want to make sure that the outputs are the same. In this case, they're both 10. That means that yes, this is a function because each x value is associated with exactly one y value. Okay. The temperature in degrees Fahrenheit with respect to the time of day. Now this is where English gets a little funky, and this is where it's important that we take apart each of these problems. 
Remember how I said with verses, they were in order? Well, now we're going to start flipping them. When it says something in respect to something, that means that the second something, in this case the time, is our domain, and our range is the temperature. Alright, so the question we need to ask ourselves is, can we be a different temperature at more than one time? Now, I'm going to make a rash assumption here and say that we have one thermometer, and we're just interested in the one thermometer. So at 3 o'clock, can it be both 30 degrees and 35 degrees at the same time? And the answer is no. That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to put a little caveat here. If we only have one thermometer, the answer is yes, because we can only have one temperature at a time. This would change if we had, say we were measuring at the airport and measuring here at the school and measuring at the Capitol building. Those could be different temperatures at the same time. And at that point, it would no longer be a function. But that, that's why I added a little caveat there at the beginning. All right, let's look at the next one here. We have a table. We're looking for repeated x values. And I see a 6 and a 6. And they go with different y values. So no. This is not a function because 6 can be, it goes with 2 and 5. Sad face. All right. Number 7, the area of a circle as it relates to the radius. Once again, let's pop out domain and range. This should be second nature to you guys by now, just because we've been doing this for a while. Domain, remember it's the second one. Radius, range is the area of the circle. So our question is, is that given a particular radius, can the area of the circle be more than one measure? And the answer to that is no, which makes this a function. We can only have one area associated with one radius. All right, we're, we're, we're going through these pretty quickly. This is not really meant to be that difficult. Okay, today we have a map where we have inputs over here and outputs over here. And again, we're looking for, we're essentially looking for more than one arrow coming off a single input. And no, it looks like we're good. So this is a function because each input goes to only one output. I should be sounding like a broken record at this point. Okay. The radius of a cylinder is dependent on the volume. Okay, I'm going to break this apart again. Domain, range, why did that make a double R? I don't know. Ah, I can type this morning. I pinky swear promise I can. All right. The domain, remember that this is again, once again, where it flips. That means the domain is our volume, and our range is the radius of our cylinder. For what this is saying is that we have a volume of a cylinder just given. Does that, can we have more than one radius associated with that? And the answer is actually yes, because if we have a tall cylinder and a short cylinder, because we have to deal with that height variable, we can now have multiple radii associated with the same volume because we haven't taken height into account. So no, we can have different radii associated with the same volume. Okay. Well, actually, let me think about that. So if the input is volume, the output is radius. So let's see, if I have something that's 10, um, no, no, I'm still right. I'm still right. We, if, if you disagree with me on that, you can always just send me a message and we can talk about that one. That one's kind of an interesting question. Okay, the size, circus, size of the circle depended on the area. Domain is then area, range is radius. Ooh, range radius. All right. What the heck? I don't know why it keeps doing that, and it's making me mad. 
All right. So if we have one area, is it associated with exactly one radius? And the answer in this case is yes. This is a function. Because we have one area corresponding with one radius. Okay, we are almost done. I think these next ones are going to be a bit easier. Student's letter grade dependent on the percent earned. Domain is percent. Range is letter grade. Okay. What we have here, if someone earns a an 80%, can that be an A and a B at the same time? No. An 80% will always be a B. Okay, so that means that this is, yes, it is a function because each percent corresponds with exactly one letter grid. Okay, the length of the fence needed with respect to the amount of area to be enclosed. Domain is then the area of the, of the place. The range is the perimeter of the fencing. We have an area that's say let's say 12 square feet. That means that we can have a three by four enclosure, we can have a two by six enclosure, we can have multiple perimeters associated with that area. I would say then the answer is no, because we can have multiple perimeters associated with one area. Okay, the explicit function for the following recursive situation. We've got my first term is three, to find my next term, I take the previous term and add four. Well, so our domain is what term we're on, and the range is just this sequence, this arithmetic sequence. The question again we need to ask ourselves is can we have term three be, say, five and six at the same time? And the answer is no, we can't. Each term is exactly one number, which means that yes, it is a function because each term has exactly one value. We are almost done here. If x is a rational number, then f of x equals one. If it is irrational, then f of x equals zero. Okay, so we have x is a, our input, our domain, is a real number. And our range is either zero or one. The question that we need to ask ourselves is can a number be rational? and irrational at the same time. Can pi be rational? No, it, it is irrational. No, it can't ever work that way, unfortunately. Because we can't, because a number cannot be both rational and irrational at the same time, that means that yes, this is a function because x cannot be rational and irrational at the same time. Last one. National debt with respect to time. It means we have domain is time. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Range is debt. Can our national debt be up teen trillion dollars and one at the same time? The answer is no. No amount of creative economics will make that happen. So yes, this is a function because we cannot have two debt levels at the same time. All right, so that was to function or not to function from the Mathematics Visions Project Math One textbook. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for this video. If you like what you see, please feel free to like and subscribe. And if you really like it, please leave me a message. That way I can start making videos that you want to see as opposed to the stuff that I think you should see. If you really want to see something on my channel, let me know and I will see about making that happen. Please remember, have an awesome day and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.